You both said today that you love each other and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. I don't agree with Simeon's destructive lifestyle and I can't control him. I don't believe Kayla loves me like she claims. We have so many issues, I don't know if we can save this marriage. This is my last shot at saving this marriage. I'm 75% out the door. Simeon is out of control. He has his own way of doing things. I don't owe Kayla anything. I've spent way more money on her during this marriage. If this marriage is over, at least he can give me the money he owes me. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Hodges versus Alexander. Thank you, Juan. Kayla Hodges? Yes, Your Honor. I understand that you have brought your husband of two years, Simeon Alexander, to court today, suing for damages to a car, $500? Yes, Your Honor. I also understand, Ms. Hodges, that the two of you have been separated for two years. You separated shortly after you got married and you've not seen each other. That's correct, In that two-year time mm -hmm. period. So this will be your first time seeing Mr. Alexander uh, for quite some time in court today? Yes, Your Honor. Juan, would you bring Mr. Alexander in now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All righty, let's go ahead. Hello, how you doing? Mr. Alexander? Yes. Thank you for being with us today. You understand, sir, that your wife has brought you to court. She's suing for $500, and also the two of you have been separated for the last two years, and uh, she wants to discuss some of the issues in the relationship, sir. Okay, so I'll start with you, Ms. Hodges. Why don't you give me some background, ma'am? Well, basically, I just don't trust him. Um, throughout the course of our relationship, there's been a bunch of ups and downs. There's been infidelity. If I understand correctly, the two of you have been together for 10 years. 12 years. We've known 12 each other years? for like 12 years. Since so, since you were teenagers. Yeah. 15 and 17. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, but you got married and then you separated <laughs> right after you got married. The same month? Same day. The basically. Same, basically. That mm -hmm. night. Really? So, the yeah. night, the morning after, we pretty much broke up. And this happened two years ago. Yes. So you waited 10 years to get married only to be separated the next day. That, yeah. that tw what, yeah. 24 hours of marriage. Take, take me through. I, I want to hear some background, but you were only together for 24 hours as a married couple. Not even 24 well. hours, but yeah. How does a marriage fall apart in 24 <laughs> hours? That is a new record for divorce court. Mm. Okay, well... I feel like it's more so of a buildup of all the things that have taken place throughout the course of the 12 years. So there was a point when uh, we were together and things were going strong and he did cheat on me. We have issues because of that, because there's still some dealings um, with the other person. And what do you well. say happened, sir? Why only 24 hours of marital bliss? Honestly, it just wasn't meant to be. I guess that's how the universe works. Mm -hmm. um, we wasn't supposed to get married then, I guess. Okay. But, I mean, obviously there was a backstory, you know. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, I got into it with the neighbors. I was trying to, you know, basically be the man that I was raised to be, protect the household, you know, provide, things like that, of that nature. And the neighbors, I didn't like the way that they were, you know, operating. So, you know, I spoke to them respectfully and they responded, like, violently and tried to run me over with their vehicle. And, you know, it's kind of the bulk of the reason why we're here. She, does, she just doesn't treat me right, you know? Like, as my wife, she was supposed to stay there by my side, but she chose to leave me and, you know, leave me to handle that by myself. And so you say your wife left you after that yeah. incident? Oh, yeah. I, know, I know there was a build-up. Well, because but... after that, yeah, there was, like, a lot of tension on the block. So okay. she didn't want to be... She wasn't comfortable in that type of situation anymore. Hello. Okay. Yes. I was not... So basically, um, with that situation, so you I saw was the at neighbor work. try to run him over. Mm -mm. I was at work and um, he was at home with our daughter. So when I found out that something happened, I said, "You know what? I feel like we need to go stay at my mom's house mm -hmm. because there's too much tension on this street." He was good for one night with that, and he wanted to go back. And when he went back, there was another conflict. So that's kind of where the the break happened because it's like. I'm not going to be doing this. And you haven't seen him since? No, because... No. 
the two of you haven't seen each other since the separation, but have you been seeing your child? No. Who does... She lives with me. She, your daughter lives with you. Mm -hmm. You have not seen your daughter in two years? Yeah, but I'm supposed to see my daughter, like, literally at least three to four times a year. <sighs> That's troubling. Ha do you talk to your daughter? It's... It's complicated, so... I'm only asking this because the two of you have a child together. I know you were only married for 24 hours, but what I don't want to see happen is the two of you raise a child that has to recover from their childhood because right. you weren't in your daughter's life. It ain't like that type of situation. We got... I can call her right now and she'll say, hey, daddy, I love you, I miss you, everything like that. Mr. Alexander, it is critically important for you as her father to have a presence in her life. Well, it's a two-way street with that, too, though. I gotta care, but she also gotta care, too. A well, absolutely, She don't care, because but... if you cared uh, for your father to be in your kid's life, you would be calling them, too. Like, hey, talk to your daughter at least once a month, I think. The reason why I'm talking to you is because Miss Hodges has physical custody of your daughter, so right. she's with her every right. day. Right. You're the one that hasn't seen her in two years. So there is no shifting of responsibility here. I'm talking about you and your responsibility because she has physical custody. Right. So going forward, make it a priority. Yeah, yep. Because it's the right thing to do for your child. She dresses way too sexy. What's your issue with this, sir? Of course, I like all of that, but I don't want everybody else enjoying it too. We've never had an issue with my fidelity. But you've had issues with his? Yeah, he's cheated. It was on Easter. On Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday. Jesus didn't die for this. Why did you get married? Why did you propose? Because I love her. I mean, obviously, I was with her for 10 years, mm -hmm. and that was the plan ultimately back in like 2012. Mm -hmm. I proposed to her then. Mm -hmm. But that was like right after, you know, I kind of, I guess, cheated. I you don't say, I, I don't think I cheated. I think we was on a break. Okay. Now, Ms. Hodges, mm -hmm. why did you get married if you had all of these issues? Because nothing happens in 24 hours that makes you say, I don't want to see my husband ever again. Mm -hmm. So why get married? Because I thought that he was turning over a new leaf. And I wanted to believe in him and I wanted to make our family work. I guess I'm still struggling. And I, I can move on past this. How you were able to see in 24 hours what you had not okay. seen in 12 because years. Because on the actual wedding night, when we came home, he wanted to go down the street to, our, to his friend's house and play darts. Is that true, sir? Yeah, I thought we was all gonna have a good time. I mean, it's oh, one of the neighbors on. Thing. Yeah, it was. It was gonna be me, her, and his, he. He had a little girl with him, you know. So but like darts a, on your wedding night? Right. I don't know. I guess that. I mean, it wasn't a traditional wedding anyway. We went to the courthouse and then we just. It went was to still the we didn't legally. Have, legally, you were married. But we really didn't have nothing else to do though. Like other than just go in the house. I guess we could have went in the house and just did us. So it's been two years. I assume the two of you are gonna move forward with with the divorce. Like I, you know, basically explained to her already, I'm like 75% on the divorce side. I don't, you know, I don't feel like she cares about me the way she says she does. And I don't like the way she presents herself all the time. She dresses way too sexy. Like, it, it, it shouldn't be... You hadn't seen her in two years. How do you know what she's wearing? I was with her for 10 years. I know how she dressed. In the last two years, you haven't seen her? So where are these photos coming from? Where are the photos coming yes. from? Instagram, Facebook, Oh, you still following that? her yeah. on social media? <laughs> What's your issue with this, sir? You said you were there, you were with her for 12 years, so... Well, because, of course, I like all of that, but I don't want everybody else enjoying it, too. I mean... I... Okay. I put it like this. So, for instance, one time we was, we was in the mall. As we're walking through, it was like an entourage of dudes, maybe like a rapper or somebody, I don't know. <laughs> okay. And, like, as we're walking past, he just kind of grabs her hand. And, like, I don't... She didn't really, I don't like, kind of smack his hand or nothing. She just kind of, like, turned, like... When? And I kind of looked and turned, like, what? And then I almost got into a whole fight over that, like... So you think she's inviting that kind of attention? Pretty much. No. By the way she dresses. Yep. We've never had an issue with my fidelity in the relationship. I've mm. never had an issue with that, so... Her fidelity? But you've had issues with his? Yeah, he's cheated. He's saying that we were broken up. No, it was on Easter. 
and I was looking for him for the 45 minutes that he was gone. That's on Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday. <laughs> Jesus didn't die for this. Yes. Yeah. No. I was looking for him. Like, where Mr. are Alexander? you? So I don't I hear anything it wasn't about that my kind clothes. Of situation at all. About the, I, that is the situation. You cheated. Sunday, we were not you... broken up. Let the record be shown because he wants to lie. Mm. We were not broken up. So on Easter Sunday, the two of you had an argument? No, not on that day. Maybe it was like. Did you a day did you have Easter dinner that. together? I don't. Really yes, we did. That. He was trying to start a fight with me because the girl had reached out to him through another family member to tell him happy birthday, which was like, I think the day or two before. Mm -hmm. So he was like trying to start little arguments with me, but there really wasn't an argument. So if we did have one, it was fake. And then I was with him within forty five minutes. Mm. So her mom was kind of being weird. I punched the door. I think I put a hole in it. My parents really don't approve of this relationship. Well, my family, they look at her as like a temptress, stripper. So both of your families have issues with each other. But yet and still, the love lasted 12 years and one day. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Ms. Hodges, you said that you your parents have also had an issue with your relationship with your marriage. Tell me about that. Yeah, there's been um, a few destructive... I guess, incidents between me and Simeon, so my parents really don't approve of mm -hmm. this relationship. There was a specific incident in particular um, with my mom where they actually, uh, we were in the car and they got into an argument and <coughs> she wanted him to get out the car and he grabbed her purse and it kind of started like a, a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was also another incident with another family member where, um, property was damaged to a home. Mm -hmm. So there was... So they didn't want you to get married? No. And what about your family? What do you, what do you have to say in response oh, okay. to that? Well, in response to what she's saying, the, okay, I'll just put it out there. The door, I punched the door, I put a hole through the door. Well, I was trying to get through the door because why? Because on like New Year's, a few days before New Year's, which is supposed to be our anniversary, she was like doing something and I was using her phone and I found all these dudes that she was messaging, talking about going on dates and all of this other crazy nonsense. She said she don't cheat or whatever, but obviously that wasn't You saw true. messages that yeah. made you think otherwise. So I acted out of character and I think she knew instantly the way I was approaching her, so she ran and locked herself in the room. Did you ever discuss it with her? I mean, kind of, sort of, not really, because she locked herself in there, I punched the door, I think I put a hole in it. So I went the next day and bought a new door, and you know what I'm saying? Because you bad. knew it was about to, you knew it was about to go down. You fixed it up pretty, <laughs> pretty quick, Pretty much, right? yeah. So, hey, uh, that was that. And then the incident in the car, that was a built-up incident. Like for like the last week or two, like ongoing. Like she was like basically not treating me right. Mm -hmm. And then her mom was kind of being weird. And then they both was like kind of ganging on me. And I was getting tired of it because I mean, I, I came out there to be with them and I felt like, you gonna tell me to get out in the middle of nowhere? All right, I'm gonna take your person. I ain't, I'm gonna figure out how to get to the next. But then I thought about sitting, I can't do that. So I left the person, I just got out and I figured it out from there. Is that what your mom told him to get out of the car? Well, he was cursing her out. Mm -hmm. It had started a, an argument had started in the car and this was because- before you two we got were going, married. Because yeah, again, this is, you this is before my daughter hours. was born. So I was pregnant at this time. Mm. So we were in the car and we were going, I, I think... I had no job. I ain't had no money at the time. I ain't had nothing. You talking about, get, I don't even know where I'm at. Can mm -hmm. I finish? I don't know nobody from a can of paint. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it was a bad judgment call to grab on her purse like that, but it was just my instinct. Did you get out? Yeah, I got out. And, and where did, where'd you go? I don't even remember. My brother picked him up or something, I think. So my family, they look at her as like a temptress, stripper type of girl that I shouldn't be with, period. So both of your families have issues with each other. Okay. But yet and still, the love lasted 12 years and one day. <laughs> I don't know how I'm Pretty a temptress much. for him <laughs> at all. Did your families advise you against getting married? Yes. Oh, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You should have listened. <laughs> because 24 hours later, y'all proved them right. That's one of the issues I see between the two of you was a lot of back and forth, and you got into this relationship when you were teenagers. 
So over the course of several years, while you were growing up, figuring out life, you were also figuring out relationships and made some childish mistakes along the way. And that's what happened. And then you decided to try to look past all of that, go to the courthouse, get married. A lot of people do because they think, oh, you know, if we get married, things are, are going to be different because I have a ring now, I have a title, I'm a wife, I'm a husband. And those things don't automatically make people great people to be married to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you realize that sooner rather than later. You're suing now for $500. You say Mr. Alexander owes you $500 for damages to a car. Yes. Tell me about that. So we were in a car one day. It was me, him, and his friend. And he just backed my car into a tree. It was an accident? <laughs> I, I don't know. What happened to the car? I guess I was going a little bit too fast in reverse. Mm -hmm. And she started screaming in my ear. <laughs> you were just backing up. Yeah. So you weren't actually driving in reverse. She started screaming in, in my ear. So that meant... And it go made me kind of swerve the wheel a little bit. And then I lost control of it mm -hmm. and I hit a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You were in the car? Yeah. Do you have insurance? I do. Okay. Well, what's the issue? Your insurance covered it, I'm assuming. No, they didn't. Mm-mm. Why? Because I didn't report it to my insurance. Well, that's an issue for you. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to report it to your insurance, but you want him to pay $500 for the damages? Because it will be listed as an accident. I didn't have an accident. He had an accident. Oh, because your deductible would have gone up. Right. So you're saying that she was partially cause of the Either accident. Either way, I know I spent way more money on this marriage than anything that she's talking about I owe. Yeah, I'm not convinced that I'm going to order Mr. Alexander to pay you $500. The two of you have been together for 12 years. I know you've been separated for two, but this was several years ago. Am I right, man? Yeah, this was a while ago. But my biggest concern is, you know, during this time apart, the two of you haven't been doing a great job of co-parenting, but going forward, although the marriage did not work out, the relationship with your daughter must be a priority. And I know you, ha you have other children? Yes. Are you involved in their lives? Of course. The two of you are going to move forward with the divorce? Yes. Okay. So, going forward with the proceeding to finalize the divorce, I advise you to do that. I also advise you to have an agreement between each other about how and when you're going to be able to see your daughter on a regular basis. But I'm hoping that that's really what you want. Because two years is a long time to go no, by without I've you... I've thought about her every day. Making, but you seem to be making a lot of excuses as to why that hasn't happened, and that is my concern. Right. So going forward, that's what you have to do. You have to be focused on co-parenting your child. And, you know, sometimes marriages don't work out in this country every day. Half of them end in divorce. So you are not an anomaly in terms of what people have to deal with when they go their separate ways. But your daughter should not be a victim because there's been a demise of this relationship. So she has to be the priority and she has to be the focus and the two of you have to work together to make sure that she is. That's my judgment, that's my ruling. Good luck to both of you. I thought it was a, uh, a fair verdict. Uh... So I think she made the right decision. I believe that Judge Faith's verdict was uh, just. Just the best foot forward right here is to alleviate this situation and, and just move forward and, and try to do the best we can to raise our daughter. Unfortunately, I don't think that the marriage is salvageable. I want to have a good, you know, co-parenting relationship. Be cordial, be respectful, and just, uh, for the most part, just, you know, do what we got to do. I've given you 12 years of my life, I've given you a child, so I hope that um, you can find your happiness, and I hope to find mine as well.